In this episode, SpaceX gets ready for SN5 testing this weekend. The company also prepares for the launch of South Korea's first dedicated military communication satellite. And we take a closer look at the Emirates Mars mission. Last week Thursday, July 9th, the mass simulator was installed on top of SN5. This week, a nose cone was also stacked on top of a 5-ring barrel section. Elon has previously mentioned that the nose cones aren't strictly tied to the Starship serial numbers, so it should be interesting to see which Starship this nose cone makes it onto. Reports currently indicate that it may be for SN8, which will utilize the 304L stainless steel alloy as opposed to the 301 stainless steel. Delays and maximizing the probability of launch success SpaceX has been experiencing quite a bit of launch and testing delays recently. The company was initially targeting this week, July 14th, for the launch of South Korea's first military communication satellite, Anasis-2, aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. However, a decision was later made to delay the launch as SpaceX takes a closer look at second-stage hardware. Additionally, Starlink V1L9 has experienced continued delays with the most recent delay due to weather. The launch was initially targeted for June of 2020. And well, in terms of Starship, the team in Boca Chica seemed to be initially targeting this week for SN5 testing, but the tests were later pushed back, according to nasaspaceflight.com, due to upgrades being made to ground support equipment. Elon weighed in on the quite anomalous space this week, noting that SpaceX right now is being extra paranoid. Maximizing the probability of launch success is paramount. Picking up the pace. It now looks like SpaceX is targeting this weekend for static fire tests with SN5. If static fire tests are successful, then the company is expected to proceed to the 150 meter hop test. Meanwhile, in terms of Falcon 9 launches, if SpaceX is able to launch Anasis 2 by July 23rd, then the company will secure the record for the fastest turnaround time of an orbital class reusable launch vehicle. The record is currently held by Space Shuttle Atlantis for the turnaround time between STS-51J and STS-61B, from launch to launch, 54 days. While we're on the subject of delays and record settings, the launch of the UAE's Hope Probe has now been delayed. The launch was initially targeted for July 14, but was delayed due to weather. Hope is now scheduled to be launched between July 20th and July 22nd, from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan, aboard a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries H-2A rocket. If it's launched within this window, the probe is scheduled to arrive at Mars in February 2021, in time to mark the UAE's Golden Jubilee, the 50th anniversary of its independence from Britain. What will HOPE do? The Emirates Mars mission's HOPE probe is designed to investigate the global Martian atmosphere. The goals are in line with those outlined by NASA's Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group, or MEPAG. Through the characterization of the lower atmosphere, the probe will provide insights into Martian climate dynamics and provide the first global weather map of the Red Planet, while the characterization of the upper atmosphere, as well as correlating data between the upper and lower atmosphere, is expected to yield insights into why Mars is losing hydrogen and oxygen into space. Effectively, HOPE is designed to study the dynamic interplay between gases in the lower atmosphere upper atmosphere and the Martian weather at various geographic locations, as well as provide insights about Mars's drastic climate change over time. Operational Orbit HOPE will operate in an elliptical orbit of 22,000 by 44,000 kilometers and will have an orbital period of 55 hours. According to a statement made to Nature by the UAE's Minister of State for Advanced Sciences and science lead for the mission, Sarah Al-Amiri, through the operational orbit, HOPE will be able to cover all of Mars through all times of day through the entire Martian year. As stated, the mission is designed to last one Martian year, or about two Earth years, with the ability to extend through 2025, if the orbiter continues performing nominally. Science Instruments and Specs In order to achieve its mission objectives, HOPE will be equipped with three science instruments including an imager and two spectrometers, aptly named the Emirates Exploration Imager, the Emirates Mars Infrared Spectrometer, and the Emirates Mars Ultraviolet Spectrometer. As you can see from the image on the screen, the instruments were developed in collaboration with U.S. scientific partners, the University of Colorado Boulder's Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics, Arizona State University, and the University of California, Berkeley. 
U.S. partners were also instrumental in providing support and mentorship to the Emirati team in the construction of the probe. Building a space economy and a lesson in innovation. What the UAE has been able to do in such a short period of time is impressive. It is, if you will, somewhat reminiscent to the spirit of the Apollo program. It was only six years ago in 2014 that the mission was announced, and the challenge was set to get the probe to Mars in time for the country's Golden Jubilee. In that same year, the UAE Space Agency was formed, in quite a strategic move and in an attempt to rapidly facilitate a knowledge transfer and to keep its strict mission schedule, according to Nature, the UAE hired all hands from NASA missions, mainly at the University of Colorado Boulder, to work alongside them and provide training into how to send a probe to another planet. It's important to note here that the UAE's approach wasn't to buy a completed spacecraft. Again, perhaps one of the primary objectives of the mission, apart from its scientific goals, was to develop the skills necessary for the country to transition to a knowledge-based economy. Thus, the Emirati team was tasked to build the spacecraft, not buy it. As such, under the leadership of its project manager, Omran Sharaf, again, according to Nature, US and Emirati engineers worked together on every part of the mission's development, from design to manufacture, with work taking place largely in Boulder and also at MBRSC. The cost of the mission has not yet been revealed. According to reports, this will be revealed once the mission proves successful. Data revealed from the mission, on the other hand, will be released to the international community without an embargo. The expected launch of the Hope Orbiter signals the start of what is to be a busy month in terms of launching missions to the Red Planet. China is currently targeting July 23rd for the launch of Tianwen-1, its orbiter, lander, and rover aboard a Long March 5 heavy lift rocket. NASA, on the other hand, is targeting July 30th for the launch of the Mars Perseverance rover and Ingenuity Mars helicopter. Hopefully, these missions will all be able to launch within their critical launch windows, and hopefully we can see some Raptor ignition this weekend.